picture of an ejaculation. The purpose of this drawing, her teacher later explained to me, was to put an image in my 10-year-old daughter's mind so she could remember what the word meant. This parent goes on to explain that she had exercised her opt-out provision. But because you exercised that once prior to the start of school, which I know I served on my school board for 15 years, we did as Rep. Vera suggested earlier, you sign this program of studies. But what that doesn't do is alert the teacher somewhere as the school year goes along. Oh gee, Mrs. Diaz wanted to talk to her child about Because things happen, we move on. This child was subjected to what the mother called unsafe, violated classroom environment, which was supposed to be safe for her family. So based on what we have found to be not age appropriate, not um, containing content that some families would like to see, um, and because the opt-out provision is just not working in conjunction with the frameworks, we would ask that you would please leave the frameworks as they are now, as guidelines to local school boards to adopt after meeting with their families and communities and agreeing that this their community would like to move forward in that way.
little discussion going on today, and it seems to me as someone that's not part of the machine of the process, um, the issue of sexual violence and sex ed is, is pretty connected. And just from the things that I've looked at on the website with the Planned Parenthood and the League of Massachusetts, and um, some of the CPS information about what the sexual education curriculum is actually involved, it doesn't sound like it's really comprehensive or it's it may be medically accurate, but there are so many things that are being taught that don't seem to be age appropriate in my mind, and I'm the mother of three sons, and uh, you know, I want them to be educated, but to see things in the curriculum that say, you know, masturbation is pleasing and it's a normal activity and here's how to do it. I don't want my sons being taught that. And if we don't want sexual violence going on, then we shouldn't be teaching our sons and daughters the masturbation and pornography in an early age, underage sex is appropriate and causing the dopamine receptors in the brain to be stimulated constantly and when they go about for a period of time, now they're instantly going to have outbursts of violence. So we need to uh, back up a little bit and maybe start thinking in terms of our sex ed being uh, teaching the life goal of marriage, teaching the beauty of what it means to, you know, little girls don't even play with baby dolls anymore. They're playing with stuffed animals, and by the time they're, you know, in third grade, they're being taught things about sexuality that, you know, most kids didn't learn. I didn't learn until I was way into high school. And we're just pushing them further and further at a younger and younger age to be interested in sex. And once we start on a mission that needs to, you know, it just, Seems like there's not going to be any turning back. So um, I just jotted down a couple things that I wanted to try to bring up. Um, one is that I do have more confidence in our young people. I don't think they have to be sexually active at 14 or 15 or 12 or 13. You know, they, they have good minds. And if they're given the permission to be sexually inactive, then I think that they would to have adults teaching them and have the schools supporting them in not being sexually active, not awakening those desires, is our schools need to start teaching that. If we want to teach them education, let's teach them about how their, what they practice now will be molding them for the future. So to not be sexually promiscuous is a positive thing for their whole life. So let's teach them that. And I guess the final thing, I think I'm out of time, is you know, I think a lot of the ideas surrounding 415, 209 sound really good, but we don't know what are in the, the curriculums that are going to be taught. So everybody's talking about this great idea about let's ex educate our kids on sex ed, but I don't want something passive. I don't even know what's in it, number one. And I don't like the idea as a mom that there's not an opt-in option. I do want parental consent, and I want my school district, I live in Marble, Massachusetts, and, you know, we have the old time town hall meetings where, you know, my vote really means something in my town, and so I want to be able to have the opportunity on the district level to be, for my district to be able to choose whether or not they're going to have to be forced to have some sort of comprehensive sex ed uh, for them. Uh, so, that's it. Thank you.
started my teaching way back when. And Planned Parenthood is the last organization that ever should be involved in health education. Because Planned Parenthood's primary business is aborting unborn children. And for every abortion that they perform, and there are 30, 20 to 35 at 1055 Commonwealth Avenue every day, one beating heart is stopped. Heart was mentioned several times today, but can you imagine an organization that stops beating human hearts being the designer of a health education program? I can't, and that's why I am totally opposed to any of these curricula which involve Planned Parenthood. Again, I put 30 years in the classroom. I work with thousands of youngsters. I am a husband, a father, a grandfather, a war veteran, and fortunately I will have been married to one woman June 8th for 50 years. I